Happy holidays, Ginger League. These analytic videos might be going down after 2022, so I thought I'd try a little holiday special. There's a certain show that a lot of the superhero fandom really despise, and it's called Teen Titans Go. There seems to be a thing about where you take a show and put the word go at the end, and it really degrades the quality. If there's anybody that's a fan of Thomas the Tank Engine, they'll have seen my thoughts on the Thomas and Friends reboot, All Engines Go. And for the fandom, it is the biggest pile of garbage that has ever existed. Teen Titans Go seems to fall into that bracket. But is it really that bad? Let's find out. <laughs> So I have twin four-year-old boys, as everybody on this channel knows. And they went from liking All Engines Go to now being obsessed with Teen Titans Go. And as a dad, you do have to watch all of these things with your kids. Over in the UK, Netflix has five seasons of Teen Titans Go. And I have watched every episode a minimum of four times because my kids absolutely love it. So, there is a demographic there for Teen Titans Go, and as a superhero show, it's absolute dog <laughs> But, that's if you look at it as a superhero show. Teen Titans Go is not a superhero show. It's a generic kids show with a superhero face to attract a wider demographic of audience and also get those merch sales. If you look at certain animated superhero shows like Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League the Animated Series, any of the movies from the animated DC Universe, Young Justice, and even the first incarnation of Teen Titans, those are superhero shows. Compelling characters, engaging storylines, actual superhero stuff gets done. You watch Teen Titans Go and there is no superhero work that actually gets done. They admit this themselves. So if you're trying to class as a superhero show, it's not good because it doesn't fulfill its purpose. As a kid's show, however, it's actually not bad. I'm going to go into some of the reasons why I think that as a show itself, it's okay. But just remember that any points that I make, they don't concern it with being a superhero show. I'm looking at it as a kid's show for a specific demographic, and that's it. So I'll go into my reasons why I think that Teen Titans Go is actually an okay kid's show, with some bits that adults actually can find enjoyable. Number one, the music. The music is surprisingly really good. The opening theme song does exactly what it needs to do. It's catchy, it's an earworm, and it gets stuck in your brain. This is where I'm probably going to sing some of the songs, so I apologize in advance. Mainly because I don't want to get done for copyright. Songs such as Waffles, 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 Scoot your booty, that booty, that booty, that booty, scooty. Oh, hail the jolly fat man. I'm making money, the pyramid scheme money. Again, I'm very sorry. And those songs are actually really catchy and they get stuck in your head. There's also a song in Teen Titans Go that originally started out as a bit of a joke and then became a key part of the narrative going forward. It's a song called The Night Begins to Shine by the fictional band B.E.R. It's got a very 80s style sound to it and it's a banger of a tune. See, if you like your 80s kind of glam rock, I would highly recommend that you listen to it because it is so good. And it also brings me into my next point of why Teen Titans Go is not the worst. The animation. You're me out on this one. The generic style that they use for an average episode of Teen Titans Go is maybe not the highest of quality in some people's opinions. But it doesn't mean that the animators that do this are bad at their job. Far from it. They're being given guidelines on how to put an episode together by people that are higher up than them. It's not their fault that they have to fall in line with it. But in later series, they've been able to experiment with these premises. In the episodes where they use the BER song, The Night Begins to Shine, they adapt their animation style into a more 80s neo-punk style. And it is damn good. They also don't mind adapting animation styles from different genres. 
There's an episode where they make fun of the fact that superhero shows are becoming too serious. They have the original animations from Young Justice in it, and in an attempt for them to become super serious, the animators go full graphic novel OTT style. It's a different style of animation, but for the episode, it actually works. There was an episode in the fifth season where the Teen Titans were upset about a Thundercats reboot. Some I didn't actually know was a real thing, I thought it was a parody for the episode. But it was a completely different animation style, and they adapted to it. These artists do have a lot of skill to their craft, and they do like to mix it up. They've even thrown in the original animation style from the first Teen Titans series. It shows that they've not forgotten their roots, but they just have to do what they are essentially being told to do. And clearly they must like doing it, otherwise they would have stopped by now. But the fact that they've done this Thundercats tie-in actually leads me to my third point, Nostalgia Bait. They are more than happy to play the Nostalgia card from any other Warner Brothers property when they can. But instead of just doing it to get a cheap ratings ploy, they actually make sure it is integral to the plot. In the episode of Thundercats that I was talking about, the Teen Titans go into Thundercats reboot world, challenge them to a fight and get their butts kicked. And then the original 1980s Lion-O appears in his very true artistic representation and gives the approval for the reboot to go ahead. I know this may seem just like a little bit of a fan service thing, but the character is treated with the respect it's due, while also sprinkling a little bit of cheese on top of it. They even have Snarf in it and the lion from one of the reboots that they had done previously. In another episode, they have a crossover with Scooby-Doo. They both wind up in some kind of family feud style show. It, it's a long story. But again, it's the true style from the 1960s. The original voice actors, where they could get them, and they didn't mind having a bit of a josh about each other's styles and each other's premise. I've mentioned previously that they've also had Young Justice in the episodes. The Teen Titans Go to the Movies did have other crossovers as well, so they're not afraid to branch out and try something new while also honouring what's came before. And one of the things that I liked about the Scooby-Doo episodes is that they weren't afraid to poke fun at themselves. Which actually brings me to my fourth point, meta humour. There's a lot of meta humour in Teen Titans Go, and I'm actually pretty okay with it. The writers and the people that work on the show know the criticisms of Teen Titans Go. They've been doing it long enough, they have the internet, they aren't stupid. A lot of other shows would shy away from this criticism or try and defend it a bit too seriously. Teen Titans Go does not have that problem. They embrace this in full meta mode with the character of Control Freak, essentially a TV overlord who reminds them of all the shortcomings that they actually have. Control Freak reminds them that they used to be a better cartoon and then it was rebooted into what they are now and forces them to reboot themselves amid threat of cancellation. The Scooby-Doo episode, as I just talked about, the reason that they had this Family Food style setting was so that they could poke fun at how rubbish Teen Titans Go was. Again, good use of meta humor. My point is that they know that this show is not highbrow. It's not for all ages. It's not for the critics to write rating reviews about. They know their job, they know the assignment, and they get to have a bit of fun with it. And I'm all right with that. In the 200th episode, they went extra meta and actually got themselves involved as characters. Granted, in a 2D style, we got the writers involved, we got the executive producers involved, and it felt like a tongue in cheek F you to all the haters of the program. It was like they basically said, We know we're not the best, but we've just made it to 200 episodes. And if we want to get more episodes made, we will get more episodes made. And they're proving that. Which brings me on to my other point the quantity of episodes made. At the time of this recording, Teen Titans Go has made over 350 episodes spanning seven series. You don't get that far if the product is garbage. It appeals to the demographic that they're wanting to tap into, the market's strong, and they've got a consistent base that keeps them going. If the target audience like what's being made, and the actors like doing what they're doing, they're in a steady job, all the team enjoy making it, and they get a bit more creative freedom as they have been doing in later series, and I'm okay with it continuing. I just want to make it clear though that Teen Titans Go is not a traditional superhero show. There isn't constant fights between good and evil. Matter of fact, some of the villains are actually more valiant than the heroes. Their arch nemesis, the Hive, are usually on 
the better side of things. It does show that with some evil, there is good in them. You have characters like Terra, Rose Wilson, everyone from the Hive, Brother Blood, Dr. Light, all characters that are classed as villains are given more humanizing traits and make them relatable. Grind in a goofy sort of way, but it just shows you that not everybody's as bad as they seem. Also doesn't shy away from the fact that Teen Titans Go can be absolute <laughs> at times. And there usually is some sort of moral involved with the stories rather than out and out superhero battles. And I'm okay with that. Sometimes the best way to teach someone a moral or a lesson is to not realize they're actually having one. And Teen Titans Go definitely provides that. And you look at some of the people that have been involved with Teen Titans Go, Weird Al Yankovic as Darkseid, something that you don't think would work, but totally does. We have Santa Claus as an antagonist who's power hungry and just wants to control all the holidays. Again, you don't think it works, but it does. We even have a hobo character called Sticky Joe who says one word, Daddy! And hands down, he's one of the best characters. I, I genuinely think that he's one of their best characters. People will think that I have lost my mind actually praising this show. I have to admit, I didn't think I would be either. When my kids first wanted to watch it, I thought that I was in for one hell of a rough ride. And at first I was, but this show really plays into its repeat viewings card. I always love to watch the episodes over and over again. I have to watch the episodes over and over again as a result. And parts of it you do start to like. I've already talked about the music, the animation, the meta humor, humanizing the villains and how a character that literally says one word can actually become a fan favourite. Them doing their own spins on certain shows like Transformers, Scooby-Doo, America's Got Talent, Survivor, where they take the premises and they pick it apart in very subtle yet relatable ways. Parody is a really difficult skill to master. I know, I've wrote two parody albums. It's extremely difficult to get right, and somehow, Teen Titans Go has done it. Is Teen Titans Go a perfect show? No, it's not. There is a lot of lowbrow, quote-unquote, toilet humour, mainly around poop and fart jokes. But overall, I wouldn't say that Teen Titans Go is a bad show. So middle-aged white guys shouldn't really be slagging it because it's not intentionally meant for us. There's parts that adults can relate to, but it is mainly for kids. And if I had to choose between Teen Titans Go and All Engines Go, Teen Titans Go wins hands down. Yes, I'm not as connected to the original Teen Titans as I am to the original Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, so I don't consider it as big an abomination. But watch Teen Titans Go and All Engines Go back to back, you'll understand that there's a lot worse content out there. For those that have watched my analysis video of Teen Titans Go, Thank you so much for watching. I may have to disable the comments because I don't want any death threats, but I hope it's got you thinking a little bit about the program itself. And maybe the next time you watch it, you won't analyze it as a superhero show, but what it actually is meant to be, children's entertainment. Until next time, I'm Super, I'm Ginger, and I'm out of here. Bye.